What's up, MFers? I'm freaking Jack for today's video. We're gonna mix it up a little bit from just the daily fishing grind. We've been doing fishing videos almost every single day, and we're still gonna fish towards the end of this video today. Uh, but the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make our own baits. I've been making tackle making videos from the very start, but today we're gonna do something we haven't done as far as that process goes. If you've been around for a long time, you know that this bait right here is very likely my favorite bait of all time. This topwater ugly wooden bait. It's called the MS Slammer. It's a seven inch long bait. And for whatever reason has a deadly effective action on top of the water with that one single hinge crappy paint job. Obviously it's been chewed up. I've got hundreds of fish on this bait alone. And one of the coolest things to me is the simplicity of this bait. These actually originated from like broom handles, uh, wooden dowel type baits, um, but they're deadly, deadly effective, come in multiple different sizes. Uh, and today we're gonna try to replicate this bait right here. We're gonna head out to the Home Depot right now and pick up hopefully what we need uh, as far as supplies go to make that bait as close as it to possible. Uh, I have a feeling it's not gonna turn out very good because it's gonna be my first attempt to ever make my own hard baits. I've painted plenty, I made so many jigs, but never hard baits. Um, I just got a, a new bandsaw that I think is going to be very, very helpful in the process. Now, this isn't an idea that's like new to me or anything. I've done this for a long time, but never really perfected it. But I've been obsessed with watching this channel called Marling Baits. This dude's a, a really entertaining guy. He makes really good videos. He's extremely talented. I'll link his channel right down below. But he makes these baits a lot of times just in one day and goes out and fishes them and catches fish. So that's our goal. We're going to make a bait right now, go out, hopefully catch some fish on it a little bit later. Um, but first step's going to be go to the Home Depot. Let's go pick some stuff up that I think we're going to need to make those baits right there. And uh, I don't know, hopefully it goes well. Okay, please don't let me down, Home Depot. Okay, step one. Definitely need a broom, handle, wood, dowel, contraption. I don't know where to find that. Entryway ahead. Oh, there we go. Down with some good strangers. All right, so we got all these options. Kind of good to some of them are treated like this guy, but I think for the purpose of the video, we might go just go get a broom just for the visual. Let's go get a broom. All right, so thought about going with this five foot long tapered guy right here, but I don't know if the thickness is wide enough. So I'm kind of thinking this guy over here, which is also kind of tapered. Yeah, let's get the more expensive one. All right, now we need some big ass screw eyes for the hook hangers, the nose, and connectors. This is what we want right here. Quite the size assortment. Yeah, not gonna be that big. These seem a little thick. I don't know about that. Definitely think we want stainless. Let's get a couple different sizes because I don't think we need our hook hangers to be that giant. I don't know why there's a big one mixed in with those. All right. Those guys, those guys, boom. All right, made it back here to the glass, plexiglass, uh, acrylic. I don't know, we want something a little thicker. All we need is for is the bill. It's kind of flimsy though. It's not so flimsy, but it's $65. Um, let's see what else we're gonna find. This is glass, we don't need glass. Lexan, I know a lot of people use. That should actually be really good. Yeah, let's get this. Okay, we're back from the store. We ended up getting this uh, broomstick slash shovel handle. Sheet of Lexon. Uh, Lexon is 11 by 14. It is 0 0.093 inches thick in two different sizes of screw eyes. Of course, also have the uh, the paint, the finishing, the hooks, the terminal, uh, split rings, everything we're gonna need, uh, as well as the clip. Ready to go. So let's get to sizing this bait up, see what the profile is, and get to uh, creating this. This has become a copycat industry in the fishing industry, unfortunately. I don't condone doing that um, unless you're not going to sell it yourself. And as many of you guys have gone and tried to purchase this guy right here, not only is this bait expensive, I think it's like a sixty dollars for this uh, for the seven inch size. It's almost impossible to find, and you might have to wait months to even get one. So we're gonna make one a little bit quicker ourselves. So just as a size comparison, seven inch. 9 inch, 12 inch MS Slammer. Um, thickness wise, this guy is uh, clearly in a different category. These guys are much thicker. The larger sizes are just a wider profile bait. Looking at them from the top, looks like they use the same piece of wood for the 12 and the 9. Definitely a smaller piece of wood for the 7 that we use so much more often. So here's our wooden dowel. It appears it is most definitely wider than the 7 inch size. More on par with uh, the 9 
and 12 inch size. That's totally good though. We're, I think we're still gonna make it, maybe it'll be like an eight inch size. I mean, the body of these guys is not the full nine and seven inches. I mean, without a tail, this guy's probably only five and a half inches or so. This guy's probably seven inches or so. That's a big tail off the back. Of course, we're gonna have the tail too, but this is really a manageable bait. We're gonna be able to make like, I don't know, if this works out, everything works out as planned. We're gonna be able to make probably like six, seven baits from this one piece of wood. That'd be optimal, really freaking cool. Okay, first thing we need to do is measure the length. We're gonna cut off the wooden dowel we got. There's a nine inch, seven inch, as you can see probably lose another half inch or so with the joint on both of these joints about the same size and so we're gonna I don't know make one kind of in between so that's probably an in-between length of the two different sizes and we're gonna go back about a half an inch so I'm thinking maybe like right there yeah sure I like that finished we're done now okay now we need to figure out where exactly this joint is going to occur yeah might be a little tough but we're just gonna take line it up this angle is gonna have to be about perfect i'm thinking so we're just gonna kind of rough sketch it to start so it looks like on the nine inch since we're going a little bit shorter than the nine inch we're gonna go up a little bit so it's about right there and then we need to come back at about that same angle which looks like Something like that. Yeah, sure. It's accurate ish. Not too bad. That's what we're left with. So you can see, especially from this angle. That was a little tough, a little rough right there. So we need to sand in there, smooth that out. Of course, we need to get that angle right. As you can see, it's not exactly perfect, but we can handle that with some uh, with the belt sander, and we'll get them just right. Toughest part, I think, right now though, is going to be getting this perfect. But basically, getting this lip perfectly in there and getting that angle right, or else it's going to dive. Obviously, we can't have our bait uh, diving. It's so it's a wake bait, and if you do too much on too straight of an angle, it'll just kind of plow water and stay in place. So. That's our next step. All right, all we need is perfection. That should be should be simple enough, right guys? So we're gonna lay it right next to it. I hope this wood even floats. I don't even know what type of wood this is. <laughs> I'm not very smart, you guys know this. So it appears to come all the way back to about here. I like that, that works for me, but I think we're only gonna come back to about right there. That works for me, I guess. about right I like it hopefully the Lexan fits in there but we'll make it fit if not there we are side by side I think we got pretty close okay one last cut of this back piece we need to make this guy have the slit for the tail right there so we'll cut that nice and big and uh, then we gotta sand this guy to taper him down but besides that we really don't have a ton left outside of painting it's like a tail slot to me Need some sanding. Ah, right, we're getting there with the woodworking stuff. Next step, we're gonna have to sand this down so it tapers like this back piece does. Look at that, that's not even straight. Come on, Mike Shaw, that cuts off just like mine is. Not quite as much, but close. So we're gonna sand this down a little bit and then we're just gonna take this entire thing and just kind of gradually taper it down. I don't have a wood lathe. I assume these are made on like a wood lathe. We're just gonna sand it down by hand, not by hand, by belt sander like you're about to see, but we're getting there. I think we're gonna be good. that's what we wanted not quite I mean it's pretty close actually to that much taper let's get this joint smoothed out and right and we're gonna hand sand a little bit and then we're we're getting there all right one quick step we forgot to do well we didn't forget to do it I forgot to do it. you guys have been doing a great job remembering but we got to cut a bill, so I'm gonna make the bill as close to in size, uh, pretty much between this and the, the, this and the seven inch size of this Lexan material. Um, I think thickness wise, I just cut a little bit bigger slit. Hopefully that's showing up. I think we're gonna need to go just 
just a hair bigger, but let's cut the size of the bill first before we take any extra out of this guy right here. But I like how this is coming along. I'm entirely embarrassed by how long it took me to find this, but I'm gonna sand it down a little bit. There we go, and fit test. We need just a hair more. Let's go cut some more off. Eh. All right, new fit test. New fit test. Sick. We did it. It's big enough. It's actually too big. That's okay though. We just need to uh, figure out the precise location to put this based on where this joint is. Otherwise, it's not gonna run right. It might not run right anyway. Might need to make a wider lip. Let's make a wider lip. God, I spent six years looking for this thing. It's not even the right size. Well, it almost works like that. All right, we're actually gonna measure the lip this time and not just guess. All right, sand it again. All right, time for a fit test. Honestly, this thing turned out to be like square, so we're just gonna have to see which side it fits better. And look at that. Same width as the wood. I think we're golden on that. I like that a lot. Sweet, sweet. Good thing about these two, we don't have to worry about the lion tie being connected to the bill. A lot of baits have that. Yay, slammer. Next up, we're gonna seal these baits because they are not waterproof, they are wood. They will rot over time real quick. And I'm, I mean, I want this to last. This is kind of a quick little project. So I could just throw some paint on here. We're gonna polyurethane these, let them sit for 30 minutes, uh, and then come back and glue in all of this stuff. All the terminal guys, the screw ins, we gotta, we're gonna super glue in this bill. We're gonna paint it, and then we're gonna clear coat it. And uh, I think the clear coat, the epoxy is gonna hold the bill on. It's gonna be good. Polyurethane first though. Okay, these guys are dry to the touch. I know one thing I didn't talk about much was adding some lead for keel weighting on the bottom. I'm not sure if we're gonna need that. We're gonna tank test these um, before I actually go out in the field, make sure they sit upright. Otherwise they would have the tendency to roll over. But with the hook hangers, the hooks on them, and uh, the bill on the bottom too, we might have just enough weight to make it sit upright. Otherwise we'll drill out a little hole and um, compromise it to water, which we just freaking sealed it for. I'm gonna have to redo it again. But hey, let's uh, let's get this going. We're gonna drill some holes, get the hook hanger in there. I need to open one of these guys up for that connector piece so it will uh, swivel like so. Also like so. Yeah, let's drill some holes. Now we're gonna mix up some gray. I guess create some gray with our black and white. Gray. All right, got some black, nice and faded down the side there into the gray into the white in the bottom. Now we're gonna have some fun. All right, that's the best we're gonna get, I think. Let's try one more time. I'm just gonna do scales down the sides. In gold. And try not to fuck it up. Before we take it off, one more hit with the heat gun, make sure it's set, otherwise we'll have issues big time when we take that mesh off of there. Sometimes scales don't even show up. Hopefully this is not one of those sometimes. Alright. Okay. Decent. Actually that looks Really, really solid. I like that. Even though it's not necessary, we're gonna put some, some black on the top just to accentuate everything. And then we're gonna pop some eyeballs on there. Yes, I did leave out the uh, drilling of the eye sockets because I don't have a, a good drill for that right now. A drill press, that is, but we'll figure it out. Okay, now we're just gonna finish the top off with some black. There should be MFers. It's like a fish to me. I like that a lot, actually. Get some eyeballs on there quick. Eyeballs, we're just gonna create some. All 
All right, got some eyes going, pupils in it. Now we just gotta add the gill plates. We'll be done. Old stencil. We're gonna run these a little bit lower than usual because we want the fish to be able to see it from underneath. There you have it. I like that. There she is, guys. Doesn't look like a whole lot. It'll look a whole lot better when we get some uh, clear coat put on it. Honestly, it's a topwater bait. I think if it was pure brown or pure white or pure black or pure green, it would still probably get bit, but that's a pretty dang good looking bait, in my opinion anyways. And it'll really pop once we get the uh, clear coat put on there. Hopefully it runs right too. I'm liking this bait. All right guys, welcome back to day number two of the build. Started yesterday afternoon, got some painting done last night. That's the last time you guys saw me. And I, honestly, I had no intention of fishing this bait really, really soon. But as quick as things kind of came around, I decided I got a free day today. Somewhat free, I need to film. I might as well go try to catch some fish on this bait right here. So this is our bait. We need to top coat it. If you guys haven't ever painted any, anything before, you probably won't realize this, but this paint is very, very not durable. So it will not hold up to anything. Generally, I use this uh, Envirotex Light, which is an epoxy coating. Um, it's pour on for counters and stuff, but I brush it on. Uh, and then you gotta put on a spinner. Usually it hardens in like 24 to 48 hours. It's a lot more durable. It lasts a lot longer. But since we want to fish this a little bit quicker and fish it today, um, I think we're going to use just what we used earlier. We're going to use a bunch of different coats of this polyurethane. I think a little bit later on after today, I'll probably pour this stuff on there, or uh, I mean brush it on. But let's just spray this guy up and then let's head to the lake and try to catch some damn fish on this guy today. I, I Like I said, I watch Marlin Bates videos a lot. One thing he's been doing a lot of is the 24 hour build to catch. We started about 4 p.m. yesterday, um, and so we're gonna try to do that actually at 24 hours. It's not what I had in my plans, but things change and stuff. There I guess. There she is. Didn't quite pop as much as putting like the epoxy brush on that we're gonna probably do moving forward, but four coats of the spray on polyurethane should be plenty to protect this coat. And hey, what I tell you, you get a lot of that purple in there. Let's take the tape off this guy right here. And then we need to attach the tail and components and test it in the tank, make sure it floats and doesn't roll over on its side and suck and uh, should be ready to go fish. So here's the tail on the nine inch version. As you can see, this is how tails are connected um, is with these two little finishing nails. So basically, they just put the tail in and you can't see them on the other side. They don't go all the way through, but these little nails are hidden at an angle and they actually hold it on very, very well. I've caught, I don't know how many fish on my other seven inch slammer and the tail held up until I threw it into a tree, but more than three, two tails total ever. This is what we have for a, a tail right now. So these are the ones I have laying around like this guy and the chartreuse guy. Now the chartreuse one's made for a smaller bait, but this one's gonna be closer in color, so we're gonna need to look at this. Probably get her chopped down, so that's where she'll be. And um, yeah, make that work. <laughs> Test holes. All right, we're gonna make this tail fit now. I changed my mind. I'm stealing this guy off the nine inch. He'll fit better. See, watch. Maybe. Maybe. Oh yeah, he's gonna feel way better. I should probably cut a little bit off this guy too. There. I like that better. There it is, there it is, that's a hook. Boom, we did it. I present to you the MF Slammer. <laughs> you guys see what I did there? I'm so funny, MF Slammer. Anyways, I was looking back to the footage a second ago and realized that a bunch of my clips randomly 
disappeared magically into thin air. Um, where I was talking about painting this bait um, and putting on the hangers, the hangers were super simple. So I put these two guys on the bottom, right dead center in the middle, these two connectors, all four the same size plus the same size. Actually, this one's a little bit smaller um, on the eye, but everything is like, this bait is so rock solid. I can see why it's so freaking solid um, and so durable compared to my other swim baits, big wood swim bait. We're gonna take this guy out on the water though right now and uh, go try to catch some fish. We actually have a long time before we go on. This was a uh, probably like, I don't know, it's finished in like 15 hours. Instead of making this bait in like three hours worth of time, I probably could have made 10 of them in like four hours worth of time because of the painting process and drying and all that. But um, I'm super jacked. I'm super happy with how this guy turned out. It's time to go test it on the water to see what the fish think. Okay, let's see what the old creek has in store today. This is kind of nice actually. I only got one rod and no other tackle. Got the old MF slammer tied on. 65 pound braid, 7 to 1 gear ratio reel. This is my Millican Fishing mf -er frog rod series. We're so close to having these released guys. I know I tell you that all the time, but we are very, very close. Um, I put some Owner ST36. That's my favorite hook for these guys, uh, for the big baits, big topwater baits. It's, it's, I don't know, it's kind of a medium wire hook, but very, very sharp, very, very strong. I believe this is a one-aught size. Put a snap on the front of him, and um, yeah, let's see how she works. Oh, she does in fact float. Let's do a little swim test right quick. See if I can learn how to cast real quick too while we're at it. She floats. Oh, I mean, that's the slammer action we're going for. I don't know if I told you guys this, but I don't even know what type of wood this is. I guess I could probably Google like what they make broom handles and shovel handles out of, but it is a hair heavier, probably like an ounce, maybe a half ounce heavier than the nine inch slammer, even though it's only an eight inch bait. So it's heavier and a little more clumsy and kind of takes a second to get going, but I think we can catch one on this. Maybe a whole lot. Look at that head shake. Yes, sir. Oh! Oh! <laughs> I saw that bass swim up to it slowly. Oh my god. My heart like stopped when I saw him. He was on top of the water. And he came up and crushed it. First ever bite on the MF Slammer. Was a pretty good fish actually. Let's see if he'll come back and get it. I don't think I stung him. Maybe I did. Oh God, he got it when it hit the water. Yes, it works. We did it. Oh, we did it. Oh no, we lost our tail. <laughs> I just had to say something about the tails being super durable apparently. And now we are without tail. Awesome, but hey, worth it? Question mark? Eh. Sure, yeah, we caught a fish on our MF Slammer. Hell yes, I'm pretty jacked about that. Even though we are uh, tailless, he tore right off. Guess that's why you don't get cocky. <laughs> we might be fishing without a tail, I guess now. Huh, honestly with this guy, I don't know if it would have mattered, but two bites. I'm not very long on the homemade bait, and that's a good one. Sick. So I'm not sure how well they're going to eat this thing now that uh, the tail's ripped off, but the action, um, I think since it's a little bit heavier bait, it's like a slower, more clumsy action. It doesn't have that, that really nice side-to-side -side action. It's quick on the retrieve. Uh, it takes like three or four feet to get going, maybe two or three feet to get going uh, with the swimming. But once it starts swimming, this thing actually has in my opinion, like a more subtle, more natural, kind of oscillating, rocking side-to-side -side action as the uh, the actual MS Slammer, one of my favorite baits of all time. Now that first fish we just caught right there, uh, it bit in the middle of the freaking duckweed, so I'm not gonna really judge it on that because it hit the water and that fish just crushed it like something fell out of the air. But um, hope, let's fish around a little bit more. Hopefully we'll have a fish come up and inspect this like that very first bite we had, come up and look at it and uh, prove that it is getting eaten because the action is 
good good enough to get bit anyway no honestly the water in this creek is actually pretty decently covered but with that duckweed up on top i'm not too worried about the tail being missing or being gone hopefully it still has good action but if i was fishing an area with like 10 or 20 foot visibility which this bait still can be very very successful at i probably would uh be opting for a different bait since it doesn't have a tail but we're gonna keep throwing it around see if we can catch some more you guys are probably wondering like what's going on <laughs> looks like i'm fishing on dry land right now but this is just duckweed that's moved into this creek God, I can't believe that tail tore off that easy. That's the one thing I didn't bring extra of because like I said, I've never had a fish wreck a slammer tail. That one ripped it right off. Let's see what it looks like without a tail. <laughs> it still definitely swims. Might actually work here in this water. We're gonna keep throwing it. <laughs> you know, honestly, since this duckweed's so freaking thick, it might not even matter that there's no tail. It might even help. I mean, it's a smaller profile now that they gotta find just swimming through the top of the water column. Looks like a short little stubby fat chode. It's like the chode guy we use, the chode plopper. That's what I'm gonna tell myself anyways. Really, it probably just looks like two giant hooks swimming across the top of the water. Pretty natural. Got another one. Another one. Oh, he just slurped it off the top. Come here, bud. Oh, that was so sick. Yep. They love it. Tails are a myth. Tell your friends. Don't hook me, please. Don't hook me, please. Another one. Long, skinny fish, but a topwater destroyer without a tail. <laughs> oh, that's funny. At least that one you got a good chance. To watch it swim, follow it up, and destroy it. He didn't even care that there was no tail. Unlike the other one who just hit it as it hit the water, which, I mean, let's be honest, he would have eaten a big freaking turd if it fell out of the sky. Whew, that was badass. Actually, you know what? The first bite we had that we didn't catch, that one I saw after my bait landed. He was like four feet away. He swam up and inspected it, and he popped it good too, so... You know, it's the most realistic bait ever in the history of fishing. Is what I'm gonna go ahead and assume. Well guys, the bite seems to have slowed and I'm getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. But hey, we went to Home Depot, we spent like $20, we made a lure out of a broomstick. And quite honestly, if we went back and bought some more screw eyes with the same materials, with that lip material, with the, the rest of the broomstick, we could probably make four or five of these baits for that same $20. So mission accomplished. We caught two fish on this bait, had another bite on this bait, and I'm gonna get some more tails, some more slammer tails, put them in this guy, maybe experiment with some different types of tails, take it back out and see if I can catch some more fish on this guy right here. I had a blast. I love making my own tackle. Hopefully you guys like this video as well. I need you to go subscribe right now if you like these type of videos. So I know you guys want to see more of these. I really need to know if I should be doing more videos like this because I have so much fun doing it. And I think it's really freaking cool to build your own tackle, especially bigger stuff. This is my first attempt at a bigger style swim bait. So be a little, be a little nice to me. Be, be a little easy on me guys because I know this is it's a craft. It's something that's really tough to build. No disrespect to MS Slammer or Mike Shaw or anything like that. This is one of my favorite baits of all time. That's why I decided to make one for myself. Um, but I made it for way, way cheaper and I can make a bunch more and I'm, I'm going to make a bunch more. Also, I need you guys to go down, comment below if you do want to see those type of videos, what baits you want to see me make next. I'm thinking glide baits. You know, you guys know I love to make the glide baits. I want to make more big topwater baits. Maybe see how big of a topwater bait I can get bid on. But I'm open to any other types of ideas, so please drop a comment down below with what you guys want to see. But for me, for the uh, the abused MF Slammer, catch you guys very soon.